Welcome back to Grade 8 Geography, Unit Number 1, Global Settlement Patterns and Sustainability. This is Lesson Number 10. Why do we need to live sustainably? As our population and settlements get larger, we have a greater responsibility to live sustainably. To live sustainably means to make choices that do not damage or use up resources for the future. When we protect our natural resources from overuse, we are practicing stewardship, taking and making the decisions, choices, and actions that have a positive impact on the environment. There are three main principles or parts of sustainable living. The first principle is environmental. That means simply improving and protecting the environment. There's the social principle, which means promoting positive values and participation in a community for all people. And then finally, there's the economic principle using resources efficiently. So making sure that when we use resources, we don't waste them. We use them as much as possible, especially in the case of non-renewable resources. Don't want to use those resources for a couple of things and throw the rest away. So looking at this diagram here, and we'll see this diagram a few more times in future lessons when we take the environmental, social, economic principles and put them all together, they all overlap. In the middle, we have sustainability. That means a community that runs, operates in such a way that the environment is not being harmed. A local farmer's market is an excellent example of how all three principles are used. Local food production reduces pollution from transporting imported food. It makes healthy foods available to everyone in the community. And it gives farmers a chance to earn income. And check it out. On most weekends, now that we're getting into the nicer weather, you will see these farmer's markets. Sometimes they'll even pop up in a parking lot at a major uh, shopping mall. Really neat to check out if you get the chance. Around the world, many rural and urban communities are using what are called smart growth principles to help create settlements that are sustainable. The goals of smart growth are to preserve the environment, improve life for everyone, and grow the economy in a healthy way. Sounds just like the principles of sustainable living, doesn't it? So just put this video on pause for a minute. And just consider how you see example of smart growth principles being used in this diagram here. Think about whether you see any green spaces, how you see the people getting from one part of the community to the other, and then we'll talk about it in tomorrow's class. Many efforts to improve sustainability start with ordinary, everyday people like you and me. Families can start cutting down on the amount of water they use when washing dishes or taking showers. Some families have stopped serving traditional dishes that are made with unsustainable ingredients such as shark fin soup, as you can see in this diagram here. Students can participate in student government or local community organizations. Of course, governments and world organizations should still be expected to make 
and enforce laws that will help create more sustainable communities. In 2012, the UN held the Rio Plus 20 Conference on Sustainable Development. At this conference, world leaders and other stakeholders met to discuss how to promote sustainable development while reducing poverty. And this is a really neat image here on the left. You'll even see a close-up of the same picture in your textbook. This, of course, is a fish sculpture, and it was on display outside the Rio Plus 20 conference. And you may notice from the picture here, but in case you don't, I'm going to tell you that these fish were made completely from plastic bottles. It was all in the name of promoting recycling and to raise awareness of the impact that humans have on oceans. Uh, so it's become quite the tourist site, but it was also there for world leaders to look at, make them stop and consider the damaging effects of producing so many plastic bottles that too many times end up uh, being thrown out in the garbage and going to landfill sites. Okay, so we're going to conclude today's video by considering the following. So, of course, before you close the video, you will put it on pause so that you can think about answers to these questions, write them down. First, what smart growth principles do you see in your community? And second, what smart growth principles do you think your community should try to follow? You may well go back and watch a certain section of this video in particular a couple of more times. And then pause the video, jot down some ideas, and we'll talk about this in our next class. But until then, this concludes today's video.